Hi, this is Amr Abdigawad, and this lecture will be about toddler fracture, which is the spiral fractures of the tibia in the toddlers. What are the objectives of this lecture? First, we would like to explain the clinical presentation and the x-ray pictures for kids presenting with toddler fracture. And then we would like to um, list the differential diagnosis for uh, in a sudden inability to walk uh, or limp in toddlers. Uh, and then at the end, we're going to outline the treatment protocol for toddler fracture. A good source that you can use is this book, Pediatric Orthopedics, Handbook for Primary Care Physician by myself and Dr. Naga. So before we start, what is a toddler fracture? Toddler fracture, it's a spiral tibial fracture. It occurs usually in the lower one third of the tibia that occurs due to twisting trauma. So it's a rotational injury that causes a spiral fracture of the, uh, of the tibia. It's a low energy injury and it's common in uh, patient in the toddler age so it's common between one year and three years old so what is the clinical presentation for a child uh, presenting with a toddler fracture uh, this clinical presentation will be uh, different than uh, most other fractures uh, so as we said this is a spiral fracture that usually happened due to torsion injury uh, it's not a major trauma so in most cases the child will be playing uh, with his uh, brothers or uh, will be playing with the friends and there is no obvious history of trauma it's not that he fell down from a, a height uh, or he was hit by a car it's usually a minimal trauma he twisted his ankle and fell down uh, or he was playing with a friend that uh, fallen him uh, it's a minimal trauma compared to other injury uh, the swelling will be minimal, there is no deformity. Uh, the child will be limping, so he may not be able to put uh, weight on the affected side, uh, but however, in most cases, uh, he can put some weight with obvious limping. Um, the, the thing that is characteristic in the exam of this child that if you try to externally rotate the foot, uh, that will cause marked pain and discomfort for this child. So as you can see in this uh, slide, um, I'm examining a child presenting with uh, a right uh, lower leg pain and uh, limping and inability to walk and what I'm doing here is I'm holding the foot and I'm trying to externally rotate the foot. Uh, if this patient has a toddler fracture this maneuver will cause severe pain to the child. Uh, sometimes if the child has the shoes on uh, you can tell the child that I'd like to check your shoes uh, or uh, you have a very nice shoes let me check it and then externally rotate the shoes the same thing will happen patient will have severe uh, pain with this maneuver so this uh, is a very characteristic finding that you find with toddler fracture uh, you will find minimal swelling you will find no deformity uh, the tenderness is usually diffused in these kids uh, they cry uh, however, the thing that is very specific in them uh, that if you try to externally rotate the foot, uh, they will have lots of pain. Uh, so this is a, a very characteristic finding in toddler fracture. So after we have discussed the clinical presentation, let's discuss the x-rays picture on toddler fracture. So as we said, in toddler fracture, it's a spiral fracture of the distal tibia. So that's what you're going to see in the x-ray. Um, you may see a spiral fracture non-displaced in the distal tibia, non-displaced fracture, and there will be no fracture of the fibula. Uh, in some cases, however, you don't see the fracture. Uh, however, if you get an x-ray uh, two or three weeks after that, you will, see this, you will see the signs of healing indicating that there was a previous fracture. You will see periosteal newborn formation uh, and callus at the fracture site. Uh, I'm going to show you now some examples uh, of a tibia, a tibial toddler fracture. So let's go through some example of x-ray of toddler fracture. As we said, uh, toddler fracture is mainly a clinical diagnosis because the x-ray can be completely normal and sometimes. And the only signs in the x-ray is the signs of healing that happens after two or three weeks from the injury. Uh, and because it's not easy to detect uh, the toddler fraction x-ray, I'm going to go through uh, various examples. Uh, so this is an x-ray of an infant, uh, the same history, uh, was playing with, the, uh, with brothers and sisters, came uh, uh, limping, he can put some weight, however he's limping uh, and he's having pain. Uh, if you see here is the x-ray of the uh, tibia and fibula of the right side and if you look here closely there is a spiral fracture of the tibia. Uh, you don't see anything in the lateral view, however you can see a faint line here in the AP view and this is uh, the uh, toddler fracture. If you notice, the fibula is always intact in cases of dotler fracture. Uh, 
this is the same kid after uh, uh, two weeks and you can see here if you look closely here is the periosteal reaction here and here and that indicate that there is a fracture that is uh, uh, healing or healed already and this is what we call periosteal reaction it's signs of newborn formation and healing of a fracture so this line here is the periosteal reaction and it indicates the healing that happens due to the fracture sometimes this is uh, this uh, sign that happens after two or three weeks is the only uh, indication that this child had a spiral fracture or toddler fracture another example uh, same history uh, patient uh, is an infant uh, falling down um, in most cases the falling down is unnoticed by the family and you can see here very faint line here if you can look here very closely it's a faint line here uh, and this is a, this spiral fracture is a toddler fracture again fibula is completely intact tibia a spiral fracture of the distal part so this is a toddler fracture again in the lateral you can't see anything so uh, this is another example for a toddler fracture another example here for a toddler fracture if you see you can only see part of the line you can see the wrist uh, but uh, this is considered you can see it here uh, uh, thinly in the lateral view uh, this is still considered a toddler fracture uh, despite that you don't see the whole uh, spiral line another example of a, 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 a toddler fracture uh, but this one is uh, presenting a little bit late you can see here the line and you can see very faintly here this this is small line that's an indication that uh, this fracture is already healing which is common uh, because as i said these trauma are usually uh, minimal uh, trauma and usually the child was just playing with uh, his friends or his uh, siblings and uh, all of a sudden he has pain in most cases they can put weight however they're limping so the family may think oh, it's just a twisted ankle or a twisted foot and they wait for uh, sometimes one or two weeks and then when the child continues to limp they bring him to uh, to the clinic or to the er and you can see here that this fracture is already healing the line here and you can see here some periosteal reaction again in the lateral you don't see anything and again the fibula is intact all these are example for x-rays of uh, toddler fracture another example here i'm showing you this patient presenting uh, late um, you can't see the spiral fracture you cannot uh, see where it is exactly however you can see this line here this is a periosteal reaction you can see it actually here also in the lateral uh, so this means that this patient had a fracture and uh, this fracture uh, is healing or healed uh, completely and what you see now here is a periosteal newborn formation indicating of the healing of the fracture so sometimes uh, you, you get an x-ray uh, the x-ray is completely normal in these cases if you have a high suspicious uh, that this is a toddler fracture if you externally rotate the foot and the patient is having lots of pain uh, that indicate that uh, this is a toddler fracture uh, so uh, you can go ahead and put him in a cast and then after two weeks you bring him back uh, and you repeat the x-ray and in this case you may see what uh, uh, you can see here which is the periosteal new bone formation I'd like to talk about the differential diagnosis for toddler fracture. As I said, uh, toddler fracture uh, history may be a little bit uh, not clear. Uh, it may be a history of uh, the child was playing outside with a brother or a friend and then uh, he's limping a little bit, he's not putting full weight, he's complaining of pain. Uh, so in many cases, there is no obvious history of trauma. Uh, and as I said, you make it an X-ray that is negative. So you need to know what is the differential diagnosis of this condition uh, of a limping child uh, with no obvious history of trauma uh, and also uh, with uh, an X-ray that may be negative. Uh, the three things that I would like you not to miss is infection. Don't miss an infection, don't make, and miss a, a, an osteomyelitis uh, or a septic arthritis of the ankle uh, by giving the diagnosis of toddler fracture. Uh, don't miss uh, plantar puncture wound. The child, may, uh, when he was out, he may have um, stepped on something, a, a nail, and caused uh, a, and have now a, a puncture wound uh, with or without retained form body. Uh, and also don't miss some uh, tumors like acute leukemia, which may have uh, a very uh, acute presentation. Uh, so again, if you have, if the history is not uh, very clear and if the X-ray is negative, it still can be a toddler fracture. But uh, keep in mind there are other differential diagnoses, uh, which the three main things is infection, osteomyelitis, and septic arthritis. 
plantar puncture wound, this child stepped on something while he was outside or, or even inside the house, or um, uh, tumors like acute leukemia. One thing that can help you differentiate between uh, toddler fracture and other causes of acute limping uh, with negative x-ray and not very clear history is to examine the child and as I said before, passive external rotation of the foot. So you can hold the foot and tell the child, oh, I like your shoes, I'd like to see your shoes and passively externally rotate the foot. If there is severe pain with passive external rotation, this is most probably toddler fracture. So what is the treatment for this condition? Uh, this condition needs orthopedic referral and uh, the orthopedic surgeon is going to apply above knee cast for three weeks. It has to be above knee uh, cast so it can control the rotation and usually it takes about three weeks. By that time, uh, the fracture should be healed. Thank you very much. Please notice all my videos are for educational purpose only. Please consult your physician before any decision. Thank you very much.